well, that little promo was just to put you in the rockin' mood because in the hot seat here for Hue Spotlight is Rami Mays. Ta-da! Hey, everybody. That was actually a groovy little beginning, <laughs> Tracy. Now we're kind of rocking out for a sec here. That was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I know. Well, it's just, you know, to put the vibe back in. Oh, yeah. Welcome, Welcome. everybody. Rami, so live. good to see you. I know so it's good so to good be to here. See you too. We're live. We're not like on Zoom together doing something. No, 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 no. And is the pandemic no... actually ending? <laughs> and hopefully, you know, we don't freeze up and you know your mouth is wide open and right. nothing's coming out. <laughs> right. I remember we did one of those, one of the one of the I like you with like the, the same thing you're probably doing next, like tomorrow. So the yes, one where yes, it's all Zoom yes. and there's a bunch of people talking. And suddenly the, Tracy, the host is trying to tell us stuff and trying to host us and she's completely <laughs> muted some some technically some technicality happened something technically was wrong and so i just took over the thing and i said all right everybody what we're gonna do now is and i just started <laughs> hosting the show and meanwhile Ter tracy's just like i'm waving i'm waving <laughs> and i'm sure we've all dealt with that we've all dealt with that I this know. past couple years zoom meetings are plenty i know uh, so tonight it's about music so let's talk about Rami and my music. favorite topic. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, creating music through all of this uh, yeah. pandemic. Well, I was really lazy at first. Actually, I was really like I was unmotivated, like most people. And and I mean, some people went completely to like you know the sourdough bread, <laughs> to the crafting and and to picking up instruments and starting to learn them. And I just put my guitar away and was like, hmm, I don't know. Like I just didn't feel like it. But lately, the past few months, actually, I've been really feeling it. Like. Just that the extended winter that we had, mm -hmm. and just like, you know, <laughs> Lord help us. So I just sort of started feeling, you know what? If I don't start picking up the guitar and being creative, I've really wasted these three years of isolation or whatever. And it's actually just coming to me now. So I used to get told, you know, when you're not creating, it's collecting. Mm -hmm. So I, that sort of gave me the the benefit of the doubt for myself, like, oh, I must just be collecting. But I wasn't going anywhere and I wasn't doing anything, so I wasn't really experiencing anything to collect. So that excuse went out the window. And uh, yeah, so but I do feel like now I'm starting to get a little more creative. I, I definitely got into like crossword puzzles and reading and puzzles and things like that a lot more. Oh my goodness. Instead of writing music. So then your vocabulary has expanded? It is impeccable. <laughs> Whoa, and spell that. <laughs> I-M-P-E-C-C-A-B-L-E. -E. Impeccable. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, besides the music, though, for yourself, yeah. you have been working on and been a part of a really cool organization, Curbside Productions. Yeah. Curbside Concerts, yeah. Curbside Concerts. Yeah. Uh, so, for those that may not know, okay. the very few that may not know what this is about, mm -hmm. explain. Okay, well, basically, we're just a live music delivery service at this point for, uh, it's, we started in COVID, right in the heart of COVID, right at the very beginning when it started, and no one knew what the heck was going to happen with music, and musicians were out of work, and music lovers couldn't go see music, and we all know how important that is for the employment of musicians and the sanity of musicians and music lovers. So my brilliant friend, Matt Masters, Matt Bergener, is, his, Matt Masters is his stage name because he's a performer mm -hmm. too, but Matt Bergener and his wife, Amanda Bergener, started a company in March 2020 uh, where he just actually they didn't really start the company at first what he just did was said because he's an entrepreneur and a brainiac he said I'm gonna just start performing around my neighborhood so he built a stage on the top of his vehicle and just started going with that with the power, battery powered speaker and started performing and out of the kindness of his heart kind of thing mm -hmm. and then people started saying hey we'd like to have you come play a birthday that's coming up because you know like people were having graduations and they're doing the caravans and things like yeah. that so this started coming into play and it started taking off so well in Calgary where he's from that he started building a roster there a small roster of saying I can't keep up with all these concerts mm -hmm. so then he called me and he said look I have something really like going really well in Calgary here curbside concerts we're gonna start this company would you like to help forefront it in Manitoba which is when of course I got excited and said absolutely I've been I was born for this you know mm -hmm. I was born for bringing music and, and music lovers together that's my favorite thing to do so and then of course I'm quite intelligent so the business <laughs> side of my brain needed to be activated as well <laughs> after all those crosswords. after all my crosswords <laughs> I had needed somewhere to put all this intelligence yeah no, so I was actually fairly business savvy as well, so that worked out really well. And since then, it's just been thriving. Uh, I know a lot of people here in Winnipeg know about it, and have uh, we've been very successful in Winnipeg. And since that time, we've expanded from BC to Ontario, and now we just expanded to the Maritimes as well. So we're actually becoming a cross Canada live music delivery service. And with the restrictions having changed mm -hmm. so much, we are now able to perform indoors as well. And we're just so weddings funerals 
you know, mm-hmm. birthdays, anniversaries, corporate gigs, a- anything really. We work with a lot of community associations and a lot of festivals, and uh, it's just been a fantastic, fantastic wow. thing. Yeah. Well, I know, and I know that for the artists, too, it's just been a godsend that they could have that connectivity with sure. a live mm-hmm. audience, no matter even if it's five, 15, or 50 people. Totally, right? because myself too, I'm on the roster. Yes. And at first they had to strong arm <laughs> me into it though, because oh, I was really? kind of, yeah, because well, I sort of yeah. thought if I was gonna, you know, being the senior producer of Curbside mm-hmm. Concerts Canada really put me in a position where I really wanted to give, offer all this employment to everybody. And it was, it was my joy to be able to do that. And I didn't really want to take the gigs. I didn't really want to be on the roster yeah. because I wanted to be in that position to bridge the gap. But um, eventually Matt and his mm-hmm. wife and, and my other friends uh, that were on the roster were like, you've got to do this. It's great. And I've actually really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. So I've, I've, uh, I've loved exactly what you just said. You know, so, for someone who's played a lot of theaters or bars or concerts, to suddenly be playing to like six people in a backyard when they're, you know, way back, yes. you know, when you're, when you're like, got your, you've got your battery powered speaker, they've got their masks on and it was just a really nice day in the summer and that's the best we could do. It ended up being way better than anyone thought it could be. Yeah. You know, no. it was just, it was, it's, it makes a very intimate, beautiful scenario that makes your birthday or, or your music event even more special, you know? So like having this new position now, Rami, has that changed you? in a way as well, like the whole appreciation of music, making music, being a rock star. (laughs) Yeah, well, I guess because I'm getting older too, I sort of feel like my rock star hat's slowly being put on the side, and then every so often I have to put my trucker hats back on and go, no, you still got it, you still got it. But I do feel like a little older, a little bit more business oriented, and I do really feel, yeah, like being in the position of senior producer for a company that's a music delivery company, is sort of what my next calling seems to be, more so than performing and, and, and touring and playing music. I love playing music. I'll always love playing music. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you know, in 2016, I think, was my last major tour. And since then, I haven't really been itching to get back out there. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, I, I like, you know, I go out for a weekend or a week here and do some hired shows whenever, before, before COVID. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just, I do feel like it's kind of a, sort of a, a transition, if a passing of, the torch of some sort to the next musicians coming my, after me. Well, you know what, and that's cool that, uh, you know, you can find something. Have you seen, well, I guess everybody, ha- of course, has seen some sort of change, but have you seen a change in the artists that are coming up today, like the way that they, you know, can do almost, or they have to do almost everything right. themselves? Right, right. Yeah, there, there is, I mean, it always is, it's ever-changing. Mm-hmm. It's ever-evolving. Um, I was very fortunate because when I started doing a solo career, I was much younger, obviously, and acoustic music was still really new and appreciated, even in a rock bar. You could open acoustic solo and you'd have a complete punk room silent because they still somehow thought that was really cool. And then as I toured more and more, I, 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 start, I, you know, I was able to afford you know, a band because they would start yes. offering me money. So I'd start bringing my band and start bringing duos, trios, my band. Then we started becoming a band that was a successful touring band. And then shortly after that, I started noticing my friends that were trying to do it. We're like, well, we have our bass player's mother's credit card. <laughs> and uh, we're probably, we tapped that out. So, and I was like, I don't know how anyone starts right now in the climate that we're in as a mm-hmm. full band hitting the road with the gas prices, with the, the economic disadvantage you have with how the venues can't afford to, to even pay you. And that was before COVID. <laughs> so I, don't, I mean, I feel really, really bad for anyone who's really trying to go like do what I did or like make it yeah. you know, on the road and get out there and tour because it's a really hard time to do so. But uh, that is why things like curbside concerts really, really come in at a beneficial time when you can make side money as a musician in your own hometown, locally and like sometimes more than you would have made if you went on the road. Yeah. You know. And I and a different vibe than going into the bars and mm-hmm. having to play like mm-hmm. the the top 40 or the same songs, you know. Here yeah. you can have some freedom to play in originals and Absolutely. It I, is all about the originals yeah. because the people that are hiring these musicians are fans of them or right. they're or they're just saying we need something that's kind of a bit yeah. country blues. Yeah. And so they're not really, you know, expecting you know, a Garth Brooks cover band, you yeah. know what I mean? They're really, they're really looking forward to hearing original art. And that's these, that, that is our main demographic are just straight up music lovers, you oh, know, that's people awesome. that love folk festivals, people mm-hmm. that love, and, and yet, like you said, some of the musicians aren't even ready to go back to the bars. Yes. You know, it's really intimidating to go in and, and risk your health and risk your family's health, even though the mandates are gone. 
it's not guaranteed safety. You know? Well, how do you feel? Because you have gone back and done some shows. <laughs> yeah, I was so scared. I was so scared. Um, I did two shows, actually, lately. I did. Mm -hmm. I played my band show at Times Change, I think it was in March. or, or Yeah, it was in mm -hmm. March. And in Latin, a couple weeks ago, not even, I played at the King's Head um, for a 420 event that actually Curbside Concerts programmed for Fiddler's Green mm -hmm. Cannabis for 420. And like I said, I was telling you earlier that it was supposed to be outside of the Cube, which I thought was great. I was like, oh, great, let's, let's have a big outdoor fun event. And that didn't freak me out at all. And then it was indoors, and I was like the only person wearing a mask at first. And, uh, you know, you just have to sort of roll with the punches and, and decide what your safety comfortability is. And the times change when I was also wearing my mask unless I was on stage. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after a while, you know, people can't hear you, and you start doing this. And, and it is a, it's, a, it's a slippery slope. And yeah. for, for myself, you know, I, I have family members that I'm still concerned about their health and I don't really know that uh, I'm completely ready to immerse myself back in the scene and I, I, I commend all my friends that are touring mm -hmm. right now I just and a lot of them are getting COVID but you know sometimes it's just a cold for three days and then they're negative I just don't know that that would happen to my family so yeah. it's very it's very precarious times you know with with music and, and that's why I'm so thankful we still have curbside concerts because there's an option yeah no definitely yeah. Okay, and speaking of curbside, um, a big announcement or agreement that was signed, a contract that was mm -hmm. signed with shopping malls. Yeah, so Cadillac Fairview is a, a very uh, well-known uh, shopping mall company. Mm -hmm. Cadillac Fairview is, is, is Polo Park. It's, it's, uh, we, we signed a contract with, for 13 malls in Canada. As we've expanded ourselves from BC to Ontario and, like I said, to the Maritimes now, we got a contract for 13 malls in Canada from BC to Ontario. And again, like I said, Polo Park is one of them. So if you're actually interested, just go down there on a Friday or Saturday and you'll see a, a little squared off area with the performers. So we have this contract where we're going to, um, since March to, to the end of October, mm -hmm. we employ uh, artists on our rosters in any area that the malls are at, uh, yeah, at the malls. So we, it's like a weekly series. And so we're really thankful with Cadillac Fairview for really supporting the arts and wanting to have something like that in their malls. So cool. And we, we, we have other contracts kind of like that as well, like, you know, places that you wouldn't have expected. Um, yeah. The, you know, that people actually really realize how much music really adds, enhances an event or, you know. Totally. Yeah. Or like, just walking through the mall and hearing yeah, live music and totally. you stop and, you know, for a song or two. Yeah. What times of the day or do you know? Um, yeah, it's uh, one to threes and five to sevens. Oh, good. Are the are the shows? Um, it depends which day of the week it is. Um, mm -hmm. If you're in Ontario and watching this, they're all four to six. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's and and it, there it's great. I mean, nothing makes me happier than getting a list of show dates, oh, and they goodness. and then they say, book them, and then I get to call all these wonderful musicians that I know and say. Yes. You got a gig. It's like that Oprah show, like, look <laughs> under your chair. You get a gig. You get a gig. You get a gig. You know, you're all getting gigs. And yeah, and it just feels it's, it's the joy of my life. You know, it's, I couldn't think of anything better to be employed by. Yeah. Okay. So the future then. The future oh, looks bright. Yes. Yeah. Well, the future, ideally, Curbside Concert just keeps taking off and we can become a, the, the company we'd like to become. Mm -hmm. uh, where we're extremely successful financially, not just culturally. <laughs> um, but uh, and uh, I'm going to be eventually if I can pull this off, maybe recording an album next year. But it, 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 that will be eight years between albums, and that's wow. as long as it gets, really, <laughs> before you're off the face of the earth and nobody remembers you anymore. <laughs> Hopefully it's not like Rami Who, and it's more like return album <laughs> press, you know? But I do have some songs in the works, and I am sort of getting a little excited about that, so we'll kind of see where that goes. Um, it costs a lot of money to record an album, mm -hmm. so we'll see who wants to give me money. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's Call start right now. Seven. <laughs> Call yeah. me now. Yeah. Call me yes. And you do have a show coming up, too, as I well. I do, yeah, a really interesting one, actually. Mm -hmm. um, there's this wonderful photographer in town named Joey Semft, and she's just lovely, and she's pretty much the hardest-working photographer on our scene that I know of. And every year she'd been doing these uh, band versus bands for her birthday. And she puts on this show at the Park Theatre, but for the last two years that we were supposed to do this, we couldn't, obviously. Mm -hmm. So finally, this May 7th, at the Park Theater, there are six bands, and each band that's paired up has to cover the other band's songs. So we'll, mm -hmm. my band and I will be covering Ronnie Ladderbrook's songs, which is like, they're heavier, so mm -hmm. it's been really interesting to try to find a way, our own way to do yeah. them. And then he's gonna be doing, Ronnie Ladderbrook and his band are gonna be doing three of my songs, 
which is really exciting because I can't wait to hear how they're going to take my songs and you don't yes. get to hear that very often. So, you know, I've only been covered a few times in my life, so it's neat to hear, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. No, it's been so great. And, you know, thank you so much. Yeah, Tracy, I just love you. By. Give I it know. up for Tracy Koga. Give Still it up on the for Ronnie Mays. Yes, yes. We can hardly wait for the new album. And, yeah. yes, it will be the big return of. Yeah, it won't be like, Rami, who? <laughs> I don't want to completely lose lose myself in, in anonymity by, by taking that past the torch vibe to... I still really do want to perform and play. I don't need the success that I once dreamed of, but uh, but I still I still have the uh, the fire under me to still play. Okay, and you are going to put the big trucker hat back on. My trucker hats. The collection is impressive. I can and I didn't it. wear it today because I wanted to just show a little bit of my the mullet that I've been cutting at home. But my, <laughs> no, this you should have seen this Tracy. Is Rami's original. <laughs> Thank you. Tracy was actually, she's a good friend and she's really sweet. But so I was like, so what do you think of the hair? And she's like touching my hair and she's like, go to a salon, Rami. <laughs> <laughs> and like, but my home haircuts are so cool. She's like, no. Oh, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's cool until you look at the back of your head, dear. Is I'm it bad? <laughs> Is it bad? I actually don't well, even know. I don't look at the I back know. of my head. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Okay, so you are going to be back. Rami's going to do two songs for yeah, us. Yeah, why not, hey? Okay, so stick around. In the meantime, I am going to have a sit-down or a virtual sit-down chat with Apollo Suns. And yes, this was a while back, uh, recorded during COVID and lockdown. So Love the Apollo Suns. Yes, great. So they're coming up. And when we return, Rami Mays. Hey, how's it going, Ed? And I know that, well, I can sympathize and share your grief right now as we are both living in Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. minus, minus 40 and uh, COVID rampant. Hey, doesn't get much better. Yeah. It's, it almost feels like the holidays, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like pretty typical Winnipeg, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Oh, my goodness. And, well, you are, I guess, one-eighth or one-ninth of Apollo Suns? <laughs> yeah, right now, one-ninth, yes. <laughs> one-ninth. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, too bad the rest of the band can't be there, but congratulations, yeah. though, on the album and the songs are spectacular and with all of the oh, energy you. of Apollo Suns. Uh, you know, for the few people that don't know Apollo Suns, how did the band get together and uh, the story behind the name? Uh, the <laughs> band was started by myself and our original bass player who had been playing in music for a while. Uh, and our previous band, uh, Electric Soul, had just broken up. And we had about a year of what I call the purgatory years where we just kind of like went around aimlessly and played shows, but with no real goals or intention, which are very important when you want to build a, a business and something successful. Uh, so we had about a year where we were just like inviting our favorite local musicians to play shows with us and we would improvise the whole sets entirely and just kind of make it up. But what we found was, is that we were so, we enjoyed that so much and we were so enthusiastic about that, that the response from that was way, was, was way more enthusiastic and, and, and just amazing um, than anything we'd done prior. So we, um, yeah. So, so when we saw that, we just decided to go with it. And then we started recruiting like a rhythm section and more permanent members. Uh, and then it just kind of went from there And like March, 2016 was our first show and it was just a four piece. And then throughout, and then from the year after that, we picked up horns and percussion and then released our first album in 2017. Uh, so that's kind of where it started from. We kind of had the, yeah, it was just kind of like this, like kind of lucid, not really, you know, not, 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 not taking the leap. You know, when, uh, and I'm sure any creative or any determined or entrepreneur person will know like that when that switch hits and you're like, oh, this is what I was supposed to be doing. We were just, you know, like, and you start, you know, you take a couple lumps and, and then you get to it. Uh, and then the name, Apollo Suns, uh, Dave, the original bass player who isn't with us anymore, wanted to call it King Apollo. And I thought that was like half of a good name. Um, so I took, a, so we took Apollo and then put Suns there. Uh, cause I also like the imagery. There's a lot of like, um, and it, I thought it sounded really good. Uh, and then we just went with that. 
Uh, and then most people spell it correctly now. Now that we are like, <laughs> you know, most people spelled it with an S, uh, S uh, O-N-S when we first started touring and that kind of annoyed me a bit. <laughs> so you can't even spell our name right. Um, but now it's good. <laughs> oh yes, oh, all things are good. And this year has been a, a big year for the band, you know, despite everything that's been happening. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a great year actually. Like I like I hate to say it because um, I have such a love hate relationship with the pandemic, but it, <laughs> it did allow us to, uh, with this break, allow us to take the time to really get to uh, kind of take stock of all of our strengths and weaknesses uh, that we wouldn't have had a, a lot of time for. So we were able to build and develop and execute like a lot of uh, online initiatives to like kind of figure out who our community was and where to find them, how to communicate and like really like do that brand development stuff um, that you can't really do when you're touring a hundred dates of the year. Well, you can, but it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, so. you, you do need help. <laughs> so let's, you know, talk a little bit about the local scene here in Winnipeg, uh, you know, yeah. the record label color red and you know and your producers and where you recorded i mean we do have like an abundance of talent here yeah well the the record label is based out of uh, colorado um yeah so they're not local um but i to speak to the local scene i mean yeah it's it, it, it's kind of nuts like um because the, there's like a lot of for instance, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and some really great podcasts that have like really great hosts and well-respected musicians and industry people have interviewed like Ariel Posen and the Brothers Landreth. And like some of my favorite guitar players have name-checked Winnipeggers as being like these great players. And I'm like, oh my God, like I've, <laughs> I've known Joey Landreth for like 15 years now and it's it's nuts to, to, so, so that's really cool. Um, there's definitely something in the water. Um, and, and I mean, really like, what do you have, you know, like in winter you either hang out in your basement and learn songs and play music, or you go out and like play hockey or <laughs> ski or whatever, you know? Um, so yeah, the local scene's been, um, I can speak like for us, mm -hmm. it's been really supportive. And I mean, uh, our November 26th show at the park theater was sold out at 600 people so uh that was really great um and the support's been amazing um yeah i can't um i mean especially for like an instrumental psychedelic funk jazz band like us that is kind of not the norm in winnipeg or even canada we've we've seen a lot of support and uh enthusiasm from people and then so i think you kind of that's your brand you know you the showmanship, the live performance. Um, mm. How does that now relay, I guess, Ed, to the record and the songs? And, you know, let, you know a song like Rosie about your son. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting because, like, before I didn't have the confidence to play that song live, like Rosie, because it's very delicate, you know, like it's, and, and it was meant to be. It's very slow like and it's just like this kind of ballad but then this like chaotic section at the end um but now that like the band is kind of like coming to its own live and we're not just playing bars anymore like we're playing like venues and can present and put on a production ourselves and really curate the experience ourselves now it's like oh we can play whatever we want as long as it's good because people are there to see us now we don't have to convince <laughs> well you know i'm sure at some point you know like when, when you go off to another country that you know then you got to start over but um, you know um yeah it's been really great to like add these new songs into the set and uh present them like that yeah and the dynamic now of the band how has that grown uh well it's like a nine piece uh which we've had we've been a large band for the last couple of years uh, it's been good. I mean, the pandemic kind of weed, weeded out, for lack of a better term, like, because, you know, it's easy to stay when things are good. Mm -hmm. But the pandemic, uh, kind, a lot of people uh, kind of readjusted their priorities or what life path they wanted to go down, which is 
totally fine. And we kind of had a, a meeting coming out of this uh, last lockdown in July. Like, like, well, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember last winter, mm-hmm. um, how the, the long, long, <laughs> long, long um, lockdown from what was it november to yes. june or something oh my god <laughs> okay not quite and june but almost there yeah yeah it was it felt like that yeah I, yeah but um but uh so we had a we had a band meeting and i was like you know i don't want to you know we were doing good and building momentum but coming out of the pandemic I, I was just like we just lost lost a year of working time and I don't want to come out of it feeling that we didn't capitalize at least on the time we had. So we, we started rehearsing more like uh, three days a week and kind of like, re- like saying to anyone, like, if you're in, here's what it is. Here's what we'll make. Here's the projections. Here's the goals. And, and I really do believe that this, this is, could be with a lot of work, like a world-class band, like we're going into the U S and we're got some offers for UK and Europe in 2023. So I'm, I'm like, I just, it was more of just like, okay, if you're, if you're on the bus, you're on the bus. And if you're not, that's totally cool. Mm -hmm. But you know, like, we're just going to keep going forward, you know? So that's kind of the dynamic now, if you're in, you're in. And if you're not, you, you know, if you can do the work and here's the expectations and, and how we'll be accountable you know, then we're good. And that's, that's awesome. You know, that's true honesty, but also that's the only way that you're going to move forward, right? Or even find out if you have it, right? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I think there's, that's kind of the cutoff point for me. Like, you can only go so far if you're not like really grinding and believing in it and really, you know, like, um, I, I see a lot of bands that even that I love, and, and even some local bands that I love that like just don't, th- th- there's like that ceiling and then that's it, you know, mm-hmm. and which is fine, which is totally people's choices, priorities. But for me, I'm like, no, nah, I want to, you know, like. Let's I'll, see where this know. is going to go. Definitely. Yeah. And like, let's do it honestly. Like, let's push it. And, you know, those things take sacrifice too. I, I don't have as many friends as I would like, <laughs> you know, or I don't see my friends, friends. as much as I would like to. Yeah. You know, because it's like, well, you can either go out and see shows three nights a week or do this, that, and the other thing, or it's like, or you can stay at home and work and practice or whatever, or like do your research, you know? Um, so yeah. that, I love it. Now I'm getting a, uh, the Coles notes of what it takes to be a, a real musician. And it sounds like, Ed, huh. you've done your homework and I'm so happy and proud of the group and my only wish is that you know we can have you live and performing and to feel that apollo oh. sun's energy but yeah, for we'll now be, i know i we'll guess make it yeah we'll make it happen but for now um I, you'll send me a video <laughs> so we can Absolutely. show i'm leaving i'm leaving it up to you so what song are you going to send me i think oh man that's right on the spot i think i'll send you a version of silver gloves it's 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 on the new album, uh, a relationship of force, uh, yeah, and it's always a fun one. It's 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 really I, I really love playing it. So, uh, well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing that video very soon. Stay healthy cool. and safe, and uh, <laughs> hopefully Miles is is healthy too as well. Congratulations on on the son, and of course, you know, being a parent does change the world too. Oh, yeah. Everything is recontextualized now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, congratulations, Ed, and to the Apollo Sons. Thanks so much.
Welcome back to Hugh Spotlight. My name is Tracy Koga. Hope you enjoyed the segment with Rami Mays. Didn't like her hair, though. Didn't like her hair at all. Tracy Koga does not like Rami Mays' hair. We're going to get Rami Mays up here to sing a couple songs. Thanks for having me, Rami. Thanks, Tracy. All right. <laughs> My doctor thinks I need meds. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, here's a tune called Something Going On. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I can't tell you that I love you. I can't say I think of you. But I know, yes, I know. We got something going on. So don't try to resist me I know you miss me and I know yes I know oh we got something going on you wrap your arms around my hips kiss my neck and touch my lips know what you no, you can't stay. I just can't turn you away. If you won't, call me baby. I still say maybe, but I know, yes, I know. <clears throat> we got something going on. Well, you know just where to go. Real soft, real slow, know when to stop, know what to say. I just can't turn you away. I can't tell you that I'm lonely. You're my one and only, but I know, yes, I know. Oh, we got something going on. So don't go. Cause I know, oh, we got something going on. Da -da. All right, so I got one more song for you guys. I've got one more here. Um, actually, I didn't really mean to play two slow songs in a row. Usually I like to switch it up to something fast, but I thought of this song this morning. I hadn't played it in years, so I'm going to give it a go. It's from an album I think I did in 2006, maybe. It's a song called Just Like the Rest. I uh, Quickly, I'll tell you the story. I was uh, playing in a bar in Galveston, Texas, and uh, I was on stage and having a great time with all the, the gents and ladies in there, and this stunning woman walked in. So stunning that it was kind of like that jukebox moment, like, you know? Everyone just kind of like, <clears throat> like, and I almost felt bad for her for being so beautiful because she clearly knew everyone was just like stopped in their tracks. And wh I went up and I, I was very much into drinking whiskey at the time. Still am ish, but that was a real good time of whiskey. And I went in there and I, I sat down with her, I mean, at the bar and I was like, hey, how's it going? You know, just trying to warm it up for her because nobody was talking to her. <laughs> and uh, so I just sat down and I, I said, hey, do you want a shot of whiskey? You look kind of sad. She looked really down. She said, yeah, so one shot of whiskey, mascara is running. She's crying. She's telling me her whole life story in my set break. And uh, so then that night I went to the hotel and I wrote this song. So uh, the basic idea is even in her new dress, she's just like the rest. She cries herself to sleep at night, wrestles with the time. She says that she don't love you. It's a sickness in her mind. She says that she won't spare a dime. But there's a tent on the side. Can she pretend to be an angel that won't fly? She's 
To confess she didn't try her best even in her new dress she's just like the rest she's just like the rest she asked the band to play her tune then she stops the show she says that she don't need a thing But then she says don't go She thinks that you're the only one That never lets you know She plants the seed and prays for rain But never lets it grow First one to confess she didn't try her best even in her new dress she's just like the rest she's just like the rest she's not worried she's in no hurry one to believe that she'd ever grieve she got an ace up her sleeve but she's gonna leave she's gonna leave she's gonna leave she's gonna leave that in a different key but it's really? okay but it was oh. a little low could have given her no oh, that was no it sounded so good oh tracy give it up for tracy <laughs> give it up for rami what a woman oh thanks guys and i do like your hair you don't i, I know you don't but you can cut it for me after the show okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no love you to bits love you to bits okay all right so rami thank you so much curbside concerts look them up Go to the shopping mall, Fairview Cadillac, right? Yeah, Polo Park every uh, Friday, Saturday. I think that uh, there's no schedule really posted, but if you're in the mall and uh, you hear music, go to it because it's one of our local favorites. Perfect. Hey, and if you have a budding guitarist or a young child that would like to play guitar, Rami is now taking students. I, I, I have two <laughs> spots left, two spots left. But yeah, I've been teaching beginner guitar to little, little budding rock stars, and it's been just the joy of my life, I swear to God. Oh, yeah. Somehow I don't see you as a teacher. But I'm an excellent teacher. I was a mother. I'm a grandmother. I'm doing great. I know. I know. Everyone thinks I'm just this like complete ass. I'm actually a really warm-hearted person. I really want, and I love teaching children. You could oh. trust your children with me. Trust. Not a lot of people can say that <laughs> without it sounding creepy. Okay. <laughs> okay. On that note, thank you, folks, for joining us here on Hugh Spotlight. And in two weeks' time, we will have Carlo. Capo Bianco here. Capo Bianco. Capo Bianco. Oh, le Capo Bianco. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys.